In this video, I'll be talking about the pedostatic system of a typical airplane. Now before I continue, I want to reiterate the four things to look for when studying any sort of system. One, what are the main sources of power, or in this case, pressure, we're concerned with? Two, what components are these pressures delivered to? Three, how can I monitor the health of the system? And four, what sorts of protection are afforded to the system? Again, what I'm going to say in this video is just a generic description covering the fundamentals common to all planes. Also, I'll take somewhat more of a mathematical approach to teaching this than many aviation related textbooks I've seen. What you see in front of you is Bernoulli's equation. This equation applies to incompressible subsonic flow, in other words, small, slow planes you'll typically train on. We can divide the equation in three parts the total or stagnation pressure, the static or ambient pressure, and the final term, dynamic pressure, where V represents the speed of the oncoming airflow. Now, how do we take these measurements? Well, truth is, we really only need two of them the stagnation pressure and static pressure. The stagnation pressure is the pressure which a fluid exerts when forced to a complete stop, and the static pressure is the pressure exerted as a result of the atmosphere. The pitot tube is oriented into the oncoming airflow, whereas the static ports are typically mounted in such a way to minimize the effect of any oncoming air. Let's focus now on the three instruments that depend on the pitot-static system, starting with the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator simply measures the difference between the stagnation pressure and static pressure. As you can see in the bottom of the equation, this difference corresponds to the dynamic pressure, which in turn is a function of velocity or airspeed. Let's see now how this is accomplished. Pressure sensed by the pitot tube is routed into a diaphragm which expands as a result of an increase in stagnation pressure and contracts as a result of reduction in stagnation pressure. Now this may seem sufficient to solve our problem of airspeed determination. The faster you go, the more the diaphragm expands and vice versa. But it's not. Static pressure needs to be vented around the diaphragm so we can get an accurate measurement of our airspeed. This series of contractions and expansions of the diaphragm now corrected for ambient pressure are translated into needle movement on the face of the instrument through a series of mechanical linkages. The altimeter is more straightforward than the airspeed indicator as it only requires input from the static source, which if you remember is installed in such a way to minimize effects of any oncoming air. Within the altimeter is an aneroid wafer, which is simply a hermetically sealed or airtight capsule Surrounding the capsule is the static pressure sensed by the static port. Now as the airplane climbs or descends, the static pressure decreases or increases respectively. This causes an expansion or contraction of the aneroid wafer, which in turn drives the needle you see on the altimeter. The vertical speed indicator, like the altimeter, only requires input from the static source. The difference being that we are now interested in the rate of change in altitude with respect to time. In order to accomplish this, the vertical speed indicator accepts two inputs from the static ports, one into a diaphragm, the other through a calibrated leak into the instrument casing. When the airplane begins to climb, the pressure inside the diaphragm begins to decrease to a value below that inside the instrument casing and the diaphragm contracts, causing the gears and levers to rotate the needle on the instrument face clockwise, indicating a climb. The leak is calibrated so that, will, so that there will always be a difference between the pressure inside the diaphragm and the pressure inside the instrument casing when climbing or descending. As the airplane levels off, the pressure inside the case and that inside the diaphragm will equalize and the VSI will show level flight. There is a limitation to this instrument in that there is a typical delay of a few seconds before the VSI indicates a climb or descent. This problem is typically rectified using, acceler using accelerometers in what is known as an instantaneous VSI. 
Let's ask ourselves what sort of warnings are available to us should a malfunction arise. We can only detect malfunctions indirectly through proper interpretation of our instruments. Now there is a slew of scenarios in which your pedostatic system can fail on you and I don't intend to cover them in this video. I do offer a word of advice though. Cross check with instruments using different power sources. I'll give you an example. In a 172, I know that at approximately 7.5 degrees pitch up attitude and full power, I will climb at a particular airspeed. If I hold this attitude and power constant in calm air, there should be no reason for this speed to be any different than what I expect. So if the airspeed keeps increasing and increasing during the climb, I would suspect a malfunction in the pitot tube. I'll let you figure out why on your own. But notice how I'm using both my attitude indicator, a vacuum driven gyroscopic instrument, along with my power setting to determine my airspeed. My airspeed indicator is just there to provide reassurance. I already know what it should be based on power and pitch attitude. We do have a little help though in the form of pitot heat and an alternate static source. The pitot heat is just a small heating element embedded in the pitot tube that when engaged prevents to a certain extent the accumulation of ice which would block the pitot tube. A word of caution though. Ice is not the pitot tube's only enemy. Insects are known to make nests in there and maintenance may place clear tape on them. It's important you inspect the pitot tube during your pre-flight. Now if the static port were blocked for whatever reason, we can activate an alternate static source from within the cabin. And as the name suggests, this simply uses a different static source and provides pressure data to your airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, and altimeter. Because of the nature of the pedostatic source, sorry, because of the nature of the alternate pedostatic source, your altimeter will read slightly on the high side and you'll have to refer to your POH while in flight to determine the small deviations in speed. So I hope you got something out of this video and if you enjoyed, check out the other ones I have to offer.